I think you look fantastic. So did I. <laughs> All right, guys, welcome to our first uh, semi-final of today. Of course, the winner of the NHL Season 4 qualifier will qualify for Season 4 and get $750, Ben. Those are two prizes I would personally be very happy with. And uh, we've got a surprising set of semi-finalists. We already spoke about them a little bit. We're going to do that more later on, but first it's time for Complexity's Minigun to be the Red Proto spawning in the left bottom side of Cloud Kingdom in our first semi-final against Dignitas Bishu. Ben, we watched Bishu versus Zygtomini. You were a big fan of that series. You really, really enjoyed those games. Yeah, um, Bishu showed us some incredibly high-level two-base all-ins and uh, and was able to take out Zygtomini, who showed us very little in his attempts at defending those two-base all-ins. Uh, one of the games that Bishu managed to, to get through on his quest to uh, to th where he stands now in this semifinal. Minigun's also a player. Actually, have we casted Minigun at all in this NSQ? Mm. I know we've casted him some in the gauntlet. I don't think I've casted him I in the NHL so qualifier. So this is maybe the first time that um, that minigun. But I think we were watching one of his games because I think Froden and Andre were casting uh -huh. him while he was playing. I think ag I believe against Daisy, and he also played against Cloud Kingdom. I mean, it was actually very fun because uh, we just tuned in, and all we saw was a very very unorthodox army from Daisy with Void Rays, Archons, uh, a lot of Zealots, and a few uh, Immortals. No Colossus, no Stalkers. And immediately I said, like, man, High Templar Archon would be so nice against his army. And right on that moment, Andre and Frodan, they did show us Minigun's army, and he exactly had the unit composition that I was hoping you that he was going storm to. storm right when you said it. So Minigun showing some excellent game sense in that series. He's going to need this, uh, the same level of game sense against Bishu, because Bishu's, you know, he's an unorthodox player. He's not afraid to mix it up and throw in... Mm -hmm. Uh, crazy builds. In, uh, on the European server, I played a lot against Bishu back in the days, and he was always very, very aggressive. Now, I consider myself a, as a very aggressive player in PvP, but Bishu is almost next level. He's not afraid to go for those four-gate blink stalkers without Robo and just blink one stalker up the ramp and then just go all out, blink with the rest on top of it, and just pray for the best. Now, I do think that his PvP has evolved quite a bit ever since, uh, but... Still, in general, I think once if you are an aggressive player, it's very, very hard to get away from that. So I think we are going to see an aggressive Bishu. Right, he is uh, dropping that second gas in his cyber core. So yeah, it's it's very possible that we'll see something like that. Minigun right now going with the two gateway opening. I think he was doing this. Is that a manor pylon? It is a manor pylon. Ooh, I like that actually. The uh, unfortunately, we did not see him dropping the pylon, but this is very good. As we can see that he's dropping, uh, he's trapping three probes of minigun, and that is definitely, definitely, definitely worth it. He's not able to really use these two uh, mineral patches either, unless he goes to the outsides, which of course uh, makes you lose quite a bit of mining time. This is a very good start for Bishop, man. I think he's going to be very pleased with himself. Yeah, the manor pylon was a popular tactic back in Brood War. It's made it a bit of a comeback as the maps have allowed for it. And uh, basically, for something like this to, to be viable, you have to have four mineral patches uh, set up in this way where to a couple of probes could get trapped. Uh, so a cute mm -hmm. little move that for 100 minerals effect effectively denies quite a bit of money from Minigun. Yep, and it's not only the mining time that you deny, it's also a nice scout. You can see that he's either going to try to deal with it or not. Um, he did see the opening of Minigun already before that. Uh, so right now it's going to be an important skirmish in the middle of the map. Both players, of course, eager to get a little bit of the map control. We saw Bishu dropping the Robo very, very quick. And I love that on the same time, Ben, despite dropping that Robo, he's still out there on the map. He's even going to fake the four gate, and I think this is so well played. Oh, to a double pylon goes down, so uh, you have to feel like Minigun is probably believing what he's seeing right yep. now. But he's got three what? stalkers to just one stalker and a zealot. But that's not all, Ben. He just warped in two sentries, and that's everything that Bishu wants. Uh, wow, Bishu actually lets oh. one of the pylons go up. Both? No, he cancels okay, the cancel. second one. I'm a little bit surprised, Ben, that he lets this pylon go up, because that's a complete waste of minerals. But he did force uh, Minigun to... Well, he made two sentries, and I think he cancelled one, because they were not warped yet yet. But still, he got away with the one-get robot, and that's all that he ever wanted. Yep. Now, Minigun is getting a very, very fast Blink Cav. He's also getting the Robo down, so he will have Blink Observer. And, you know, I'm not so sure that I like this on Cloud Kingdom. I feel like Cloud Kingdom's a really great Immortal map. It is. Uh, you can definitely make it happen with Blink Stalks and Observer, but you're really going to have to do excellent. You're going to have to drop some good forces to pure Blink Stalker alone and just try to run around. Uh, jump in from here to the main and then try to do something with natural. That's not going to work. You need to do something more than that. So the moment you get aggressive with the Blink Stalkers, try to get a pile in here, try to get a sentry. 
and try to drop force field. So I'm also very curious to see where Minigun is going to take this, because from where we stand right now, I like uh, Bishu's position a whole lot better. Yeah, he's getting the expansion up. His uh, his economy, well, they're even econ economically, 27 to 27. But of course, that faster nexus is going to put him in a great spot. And what does Minigun do from here? Is he going to wait till the observer's out before he drops yes. his nexus, or is he going to try to do this all in off oh the yeah. base? I'm not sure if it's going to be all in. He might just uh, try to see what he can possibly make happen with those blink stalkers. And if it goes really well, he might just ignore the nexus and warp in more and more and more stalkers. The moment he feels like, okay, Bishu's actually pretty damn well prepared for this. Well, uh, ooh, where's the observer of Minigun? Bishu really doesn't have that much out though, Kev. Where's the observer of Minigun? It's still on the robot? Somewhere. Okay, I oh, they're about to meet each other in the middle of the map. If Bishu loses that observer, that would be very crucial. Observers are always crucial in this phase of the game. But two immortals, well, you need some zealots too, uh, Bishu. Zealots are actually key in this phase of the game. Oh, well. Bishu's got a lot of army supply, but I'm not really. S it doesn't look like that much. I guess that's the, the value of the double immortal. Here we go. First fight is going to happen immediately. Minigun blinks away, realizing that. Um, observer. Oh, Bishu's moving the observer just in time. The observer is oh so important, and actually Bishu's just going to lose the observer. Nice blink right there by Minigun into the main base of Bishu, and I'm starting to like this. Yeah, he's going to pick off a pylon, and then he's going to blink right back. No, he it's doesn't have gonna to. Blink. He's going to stick around a little bit of a uh, little bit of a juke there, as Bishu thought Minigun was going to deliver, and now he's going to blink down. I lost one stalker in the process a there. A little bit careless, but uh, otherwise showing some really uh, nice. Imagine Ben, if he had a sentry right now here, he would just wipe the sentry over here and drop the force field on the ramp. It's still a possibility, Kev. He does have that pylon. Uh, he on walked the in the sentry ground. right now. Yep, there it is. He's going to blink into the main base once more. Wants to pull those immortals out of position. Oh, those immortals are very uncovered. Could he possibly kill them? No, he's just going to back off once again. He's going to try to pick up one. He's going to end up losing two stalks already. Oh. Oh, a little bit sloppy there. Uh, d again, blinks down to the low ground. There was no force field as Bishu has managed to split up his troops a little bit. And this is the, the longer this goes on, yeah, I feel the, like better the better is. it gets for Bishu. No doubt. Even though Bishu only has 26 workers, the moment that he feels safe and he's able to uh, get many probes out, it's going to be so good. Once more, Minigun ends up losing two stalkers here, only for the cost of one zealot. He needs to do better than this. No, oh, and he's just going to go for a big fight here in the natural. Does he have enough? I don't think no. he does. Blinking backwards again. Bishu playing some excellent StarCraft. Yeah, Bishu doing a really good job splitting up his army. Never too exposed on one side. Always having just enough to deal with either army. This is the moment where Minigun is really going to have to make it happen. If he ever wants to make it happen, does that's a good force, force field. field. Could he possibly kill this Nexus? No, he's well, no there's no way. He just very smart positioning by Bishu. And uh, he's going to have to back up once again. Bishu, his supply is starting to climb past that of miniguns. They're yeah. even in army supply at this point. Well, Bishu's army is simply better. Uh, Bishu is going to uh, minigun is going to try to pick off an immortal, and he does do that. This time, he doesn't end up losing any stocks. Now, this is the blink stock play that we want to see out of uh, minigun. That was good. That was a very, very good exchange. Yeah, but he's going to need a few more of those. Bishu's just going to come right yeah. out and see if he can shut down this pylon and stop the reinforcements again. Oh, those two immortals are too much. Uh. They're too much right now to deal with. And if these uh, stalkers are a little bit too low, and Bishu just uh, focus firing the low HP stalkers and doing a great job. He's going to pick off a third stalker, maybe even a fourth. Mm -hmm. And if Minigun tries to blink to the low ground, there's an army there waiting for him. There is oh. no retreat from here. This is Hotel California, Kev. Minigun just lost pretty much uh, all of his stalkers. He did wrap in a few more stalkers and blinked into the main base with those two. So this time he will be able to pick up some units, but losing all those blink stalkers is so expensive. And Bishu just going to send all of his probes down to the natural. Because he doesn't want to deal with this. Oh, an interesting blink right there by Minigun. Minigun even got the zealot in the main base. Not sure how that happened. He's going to pick up these two stalkers as well. Wow, those two reinforcement stalkers. They definitely saved the day for Minigun. Yeah, they're, they're making uh. something of what it would otherwise be a, a Wow, Minigun situation. is doing this so well. He blinked across those units, picked up a sentry, and still has these three stalkers alive. And one more of them will fall, so he's only going to retreat with two stalkers, but... I just feel like, uh, you know, the really, he hasn't dealt the amount of damage he needs to. Yeah, well, right on the final moment, like, up until these two stalkers from here joined into the main base, I would have totally agreed with you. But I think those two stalkers, they added so much DPS and he picked off so many units that suddenly this game is a whole lot closer. Uh, Minigun is only three workers behind. Bishu was not mining any gas for a little while because he transferred all of his pros to the natural. And this will also uh, probably scare Bishu too much. Oops. Uh, was can't be too much to...
try to make something happen on the aggressive side. Pretty so. large army supply difference, though. 31 to 20. Minigun still trying to be aggressive with these stalkers. Will manage to pick off a sentry. Uh, loses another stalker. Almost ends up losing the observer. He's going to try to pick off the observer. Bishop now. <laughs> and we'll wow, get it. Both observers fall. What are the, well, what are the, the odds? odds of that? That's crazy. And uh, well, where do you go from here, Minigun? He has managed to get his Nexus up. and He just wants to buy time for he's himself. He's really close in the Harvesters, 39 to 40. Got right. two Immortals on his own as well on the bottom side of this map. Both players right now adding the Robotics base, so it's still a small advantage for Bishu, but I don't think, well, uh, 15 is quite a big advantage, but it's a lot of Zealot, so. What Minigun is doing is really utilizing his mobility and just showing that uh, if you are the mobile player, if you can uh, spread your opponent out, you can make things happen. Uh, <laughs> now, he's got to make a lot more happen if he's going to be able to come back in this game, Kev. He's still behind, but he's he's taking the right steps, I feel. He's getting closer. Bishu was quite far ahead for a little while because the first exchanges did really not go into Minigun's favor. But after that, Minigun made something happen. He's going to have to be careful right now though, because four blink stalkers, it just takes too long to really pick off units. As you can see, it takes so many volleys to just take down a Zealot. And while this Immortal is hammering away, <laughs> now this time the Observer of Minigun will fall. But that's a very nice pick off for Bishu. Uh, like right now he can't really do much anymore with those blink stalkers so we can say at the end of the day Bishu is still a little bit ahead but Minigun has a small worker advantage he does have a small worker advantage uh, Bishu has kind of stopped producing probes after saturating two bases and uh, what is he going to do now is it third base time or is it time to get a little bit aggressive there's still no twilight council from Bishu which surprises me a little Oh, Bishu actually uh, very silly right there. Bishu just sent out three zealots to deal with a single pylon. He's going to end up losing at least two of them and maybe even the last one. Now he will be able to save that one. That was fortunate Billy of today. <laughs> it's going to be double Robo Colossus for Bishu from this point forward, Kevin. Yeah, and the same for Minigun, as Minigun is adding his second robotics facility as well. And he's actually ahead in the... No, they're even in the Colossus count. So very, very close in that regard. Uh, both players also getting Thermal Lance at approximately the same times. Man, this has become a close game. Yeah, it's a very close game. Uh, Bishu still has a minor uh, supply advantage, but Minigun has the worker advantage. And uh, since Bishu went for double robo as well, and he even added the forge, I don't really think we're going to see him attack very, very soon. Maybe he wants to make something happen with four or five Colossus. He's going to have one now. So maybe with five Colossus, he wants to give it a go. But I think by that time, Minigun should be ready to defend. Yeah, I think you're right. Um, Bishu will have plus one whenever they do fight. So that's, that's maybe one thing that could swing the fight back his way. And, uh, you know, we can't forget that uh, when you look at the Ooh. army supply, Bishu is still up a little bit. That is a very incredibly aggressive third base. But you know what? Bishu's doing the same thing. Yes, and that's going to work out well for Minigun. And the best thing is, Ben, that Minigun is immediately going to scout it. Uh, so he has so much more freedom. Well, Bishu just hopes that he's making the correct choice. He's going to try to scout as well over here with two Zealots on the right bottom side of this map. Uh, might run into this pylon. They're going to walk right past it. Will Minigun respond to it? Oh, this is actually going to be nice because now Minigun can get units in position to prevent scouting from that third base. Yeah, keeping his opponent in the dark as he plants a proxy pylon up at the top of the map. Bishu, though, be it through great game senses or through just damn luck, is going to see that Minigun has thrown down this pylon and should also be able to deal with that. Seven workers ahead for Minigun right now as uh, he's catching up in army supply as well. We see Bishu right now adding the Twilight console. Might get charged, but I just think in general it's mostly for a plus two since he's already researching plus one. Upgrades are a little bit ahead. Minigun is actually going to add the Twilight console already. So we might see a couple of Archons in the mix. And Ben, you know that I'm a big fan of Archons late game PvP. Yeah, they absorb so yep. much damage. They're quite good against Zealots. And, uh, you know, they just, they have a number of functions and they, they deal with force field. They're just, they're just really strong, beefy units that are good to have. Uh, the Hikes, right? That's an interesting choice. I guess also for the Archons. Yeah, I might try to make something happen with DTs in the moment that uh, his opponent is going to have detection everywhere. He might just morph them into Archons. I'm still not sure if I'm a big fan of that, man. Because Dark Templars are really quite expensive. Yeah. Uh, it costs less gas than a high Templar, but uh, but uh, many more minerals. Uh, but that said, there are no cannons at Minigun's third, and no. if Bishu could pull that army out of position and then walk a DT in there, that could be a really key key moment in the game. Yeah, and the best thing is actually that he's getting a white prism as well, so that means that he's not just going to cause the problem at the front, where there will most likely be an observer or in the near uh, area of that observer uh, of that base. There will always be an observer somewhere, but in the main base there won't be any detection, so it's going to be a lot harder for Minigun to deal with those Dark Templars, and I kind of like that. 
Yeah, I'm mean, Addy too. I think the Warp Prism is just a, a great key unit. It gives you so much more mobility and just makes Protoss that much more frustrating to deal with. Uh, both players still sitting back and playing very yeah. turtly, Kev. He might make it happen, actually, with those Dark Templars. He's nine or ten workers behind, actually. Uh, well, nine now again. Two Colossus are on the way. Those Dark Templars are going to have to deal quite a bit of damage to make them pay for themselves. And right at this moment, Minigun is actually getting uh, cannons. Uh, he's getting a cannon at his third base. But not at his natural, and that's where the he War is. Prism's going. He's is actually he? getting a cannon oh at yeah his he natural. Is. Right there by the Assimilator. So... Oh, that's going to be so key. Here we do see those first two Dark Templars. But those cannons are just going to be ready, like, right in time almost. It's uh, insane timing for Minigun. Look at this. Clutch. DT's being split up. One going into the main where there are or there is no detection. The second DT in the natural is just going to hack oh, away. Oh, Observer is almost out, out here as range. well. But there's not much in the main for that DT to kill. Now he's killing a few pros, but this Observer is going to spawn right now. So Bishu is going to end up losing. Well, I think this... Uh, Dark Templar did have a small field there. Visha killed 17 workers throughout this game. Well, he actually killed really a lot, uh, certainly because of this Dark Templar. In the natural. one with the third. Mm -hmm. Maybe not. Was there? Yeah, there was one in the third, one in the main, one in the natural. But okay. uh, the one over here definitely didn't deal a lot of damage. The one in the main killed four to five probes. The one in the natural killed a lot, so it was okay for Bishu. I'm still not sure if it was really worth it. What it does do is it uh, it opens up more supply room for Minigun's army. And if we look at the army supply tabs, we can see that these guys have become, you know, it's now neck and neck, 125 supply to 120 army supply. Very, very even game in that regard. Four Archons are out for Minigun, and that makes his army, in my opinion, a little bit better. Yep, he's a little bit ahead in upgrades right as well, which is crazy, because I think earlier this game... Uh and Bishu started the forge first. Yeah. Oh, actually, no, Bishu's a little bit ahead, but plus two is ready right now for uh, Minigun as well, so it's completely even if they would fight right now. The army of Bishu is a little bit bigger. Let's take a look at the unit count. We have 22 Zealots for Bishu. There's eight more than uh, Minigun has, but we have four more Archons for Minigun. Yeah, but critically, there's no... Ch okay, he's researching charge. It's not done yet, though. Uh, I'll be ready in about 30 seconds. Well, so if they would they fight, fight without charge, that would be so massive for Minigun. Then I prefer Minigun's army so much over the army of Bishu. But Minigun's, in fact, backing up just because of uh, Bishu running around in the middle of the map with a Zealot. 195 supply to 188. These guys are going to meet soon, Kevin. It looks like it's going to be around the third base of Bishu that they're going to fight. What did Bishu just kill there with? Uh, I think he was killing a couple of his own units. Yeah. Uh, a couple Stalkers. Yeah. He's warping more Zealots. He's doing it again. Well, Kill I a mean Zealot that time to warp in a High Templar. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I know Stalkers are not the best, but killing them yourself seems a little... Uh, Bishu Over just wants to keep his like average uh. unspent resources really low. <laughs> so that on the score screen, it looks like he's got really good macro. He is 60 seconds ahead in plus three. If he would fight with plus three against plus two of Minigun, that would be massive. Right now, the army supply tab is so extremely even. Look at this hero zealot of Minigun. 144 to 145, and that is a hero zealot. Uh, War Prism also being used up in the main base. Going to kill uh, this cannon and then uh, be oh, just annoying in general. I love this War Prism. This is so smart. He's going to force a big fight right now and he's going to warp in Zealous from the back. If he can get away with that, that would be so good to mess with the AI of the Colossus. Uh, but I don't think it's actually going to end up happening as Bishu is marching forward with a great army. Archons are a little bit confused. Uh, all army. the Colossi of Bishu. Oh, but look at this minigun. Looks like he's just crushing. Supplies are very even still. It's Colossus versus Colossus. And who's going to come out on top? Supplies are still uh, staying even. Bishu's the one that backs off. Yeah, I can totally understand that because of these eight Zealous. They would have made a world of difference. But during all that band, minigun did have Zealous in the main base, and he's working on the Nexus. He's going to take that one out. I'm not sure how important that is. Yeah, it's I don't know if that matters yeah. all that much. I would rather see him target pylons. Or uh, Templ or Templar Archives, Dark Shrine, that kind of stuff. That's uh, what he's going to work on right now. Zealots of Bishu do finally show up to clean this mess up. Bishu did get another expansion uh. up in the top left-hand corner of the map. Zealots do finally. Oh, is Ooh. the Templar Archives going to fall? It's so close. It is not going to fall. Actually, it survives with 37 HP. Man, the Zealots should have done one more push-up before they came to attack. Uh, if only Happy Zerg was that personal coach. <laughs> <laughs> they wouldn't have done one more push-up, Ben. We both know they would have done 20 more. The Earth couldn't have handled one more push-up <laughs> if Happy Zerg was coaching. <laughs> Would have flown uh -huh. us out of orbit. We'd have been closer to the sun. We would have all died a horrible death. Interesting scenario right now, where Bishu still has uh, the Colossus lead. He has nine Colossus over six Colossus of Minigun. Minigun um, had more Archons, but Bishu just added a few Archons. Bishu's army looks a little bit stronger right now. Yeah, it's very close in army supply. Four Archons to three. One immortal to two. Oh, that's a bad engagement, Bishu. And the Zealots. Oh no, Bishu's Zealots are way out in front. He's going to lose a lot of them for free. Yeah, lost a couple of Zealots uh, for absolutely no reason. 
Now Minigun takes the supply lead once more. Both players are on four, bases, uh, four bases. Minigun is still completely unaware of this expand on the left top side of this map. He also still has his warp prism, which, and I hope he hasn't forgotten about it, because next time he sees that army out on the map, this prism could warp in a lot of zealots. That would be very frustrating for Bishu to deal with, or even DTs. But his income is not even that high. Uh, it's surprising. kind of wonder why he's using all his probes. It should be higher than 1,400 oh minerals a minute. He's got two bases of probes spread out across three bases, I suppose. Yeah. That's and he's using all extractors, so his gas income is very, very important. That's also very true. Uh, both players just kind of dancing around the middle of the map. It's Minigun who's going to max out first here. And, and he's going to use the warp prism once more. Wow, he sees his army in the middle of the map. There we can do see that uh, Zealot warp in. He's going to try to take pick up the Templar Archives once more. I think Minigun is playing some really, really nice PvP. No, I have to agree with you, Kev. Uh, Zealots warped in to try and defend this. Oh, the Dark Shrine might go down as well. Only three Zealots can hit it, though. I do think Bishu will clean this up before losing his ability to produce the DTs. Pylon set up on the high ground outside of the, uh, well, I guess the, the fourth base. most rich, uh, yeah, we'll call it the fourth base, uh, remaining base of Bishu. Now Minigun can harass this one. A couple of Zealots will start working on this cannon, and it should fall. Bishu does have a smaller army right now, Ben, so that's going to mean that his uh, army supply is going to be a little bit bigger. But he did have a couple of units in the main base. Obviously, they're not going to be able to fight for him. He's remaking the Templar Archives as well. Pretty crazy PvP here. Yeah, and one thing that Bishi did is throw down the Fleet Beacon, but he hasn't started that Mothership yet. And, uh, you know, I wonder, is it just because he can't afford it? Is it because yeah. he's forgotten? Uh, I think it's because he can't afford it. He's really not that rich. He's not even maxed out, and he doesn't have any bank, so... And there is this army knocking uh -oh. on the front door. He's going to end up losing his Templar Archives yeah. once more. That's got to be very, very frustrating. Uh, but this archives is does fall. But I find this very interesting because Minigun right now can spot this fleet beacon. And now I really wonder, obviously he doesn't know. Uh, this is smart, by the way, warping in a Dark Templar. He's going to be able to deal with this Zella, those Zellas quite easily. Now Bishu is starting the mothership, so if Minigun wants to hit some sort of a window, it really has to be before that mothership is out. Yeah, mothership can definitely turn things around. There is no Stargate down for Minigun at all. These guys are going to fight on this ramp. Bishu does have the high ground advantage. He's got a lot of Colossa. It's wow. actually an uh, even Colossus count, but that was a fight that went in Bishu's favor. Minigun yeah, all of his Colossus were shooting all the time. That was the biggest difference, I guess. Minigun retreating frantically across the map. Oh, he's whopping in so many Archons. Archons. Oh, this is actually a really key moment right here. Will these Archons finish, or is Bishu going to end this game? Minigun does have a big supply lead, and he's got a great position to fight from right now. All of his Colossi firing some DTs coming in from behind, and there is no observer oh for my Minigun. God. Minigun is going to end up losing at least two Colossus now already. These Dark Templars dealing so much damage. How many observers are there in the map? There's not a single observer on oh, the map. Oh, Minigun, huge critical mistake. Colossi getting tangled up a little bit. More of them will fall, and this is the decisive moment that I think is going to determine the yep. outcome of this game, Kevin Bishu has battered Minigun back. And he has the Mothership on the way. And he has the Mothership on the way. It's going to be out in just a few short seconds. And uh, with that, he's going to have a much stronger fighting army. Not to mention, <laughs> Minigun's only going to have the one Observer. He didn't produce extras. So that's that's another thing that he has to worry about. Yeah, if you I'd like to see him make one Phoenix. Two cannons, <laughs> one Phoenix. Yeah, it just automatically kills the Observer. Three Dark Templars start working on these two cannons, and Minigun will be able to keep his fifth base alive. Yes, guys, this is PvP, and this does happen. Sometimes we do see five bases in PvP. Uh, Minigun's army once more, but it's still a little bit bigger, but he's... Why is it bigger? Well, he's got more bases. Uh, is, I think, the real thing. Yeah, and he has more workers as well. And he's had more income for a longer time. He's got significantly more workers. In he's fact. getting observer speed now. I think that's a very smart decision. I would love to see him get that a little bit quicker. I would love to see him both take off these extractors as well, since uh, gas seems to be what he's lacking a little bit. And you can never have too many archons. Well, you can, but uh, I would really say certainly when you play against Mothership, you want to get high Templars on the map. You want to get archons because <laughs> you really do not want to get feet. Uh, archon over here in the corner. <laughs> oh, I missed him. <laughs> what is he doing down there? It's Ninja Archon. He is uh, in a bad place. Ninja Archon is now a dead Archon. <laughs> wow, I missed the Ninja Archon. Man, so even. 34 minutes into this game, both players exactly 111 army supply. But this Mama Ship is out right now. And Mama Ship is scary, man. She sure is, Kev. And uh, she's got even got enough m uh, energy for a Vortex. So uh, that's one just one more thing that Minigun has to worry about. He is warping in some High Templar. He's going to need to keep at least one or two of them out just for feedback. 
he does have a high Templar with his army, and he has observer speed, so it's going to be a little bit easier for him to spot those kind of things. Uh, BC right now took his fifth base as well, where his fourth base should have been. But Minigun is maxed out once more. Man, this game is insane. Yeah, Minigun is maxed out, but his army's still smaller than Bishu's. It's uh, a little bit crazy. It's because he's got so many probes, Kev. Uh, great position for Minigun here. He's going to work his way right over to the undefended natural of Bishu. And what is Bishu? Oh, this is so here? risky. Uh, Minigun so doesn't risky. have a mothership. His army's committed. Bishu yeah. just trapped us with a vortex. Where is the mothership? Oh, vortex is going down from the, uh, the natural yeah, there. And I think it gets enough. It gets yep. more than enough of that army. And now Minigun. He's just screwed. There's actually virtually nothing he can do from yeah. this position. Doesn't even want to wait yeah, until all of his Colossus and Archons GG. leave the Vortex. He will just call GG. A little bit of an anticlimactic uh, yeah, played ending. Played a great game, but then put himself in a, just a terrible position. And the Mothership was able to capitalize on uh, that great play from Bishu. One moment while he was moving around the map, while he was being active with that Warp Prism, warping in Zealots in the main base, I really thought that this was meaning guns games to lose. Like the moment where one player takes a sort of ninja expand, that's the moment where that player does not feel safe and feels that he's behind. And it's right now, I actually can't take a fourth base because if he attacks it, I can't defend it, I'm going to lose. So that kind of gives it away that Bishu was afraid as well. But Yeah, it was a great game, yeah. man. Uh, Bishu was well ahead, and then it was even, and then he was behind, and then he won. So, uh, emotional roller coaster for Bishu, who is, I think, Swedish, if I'm not mistaken. That is correct, Ben. Swedish Pro He used to live in the Pro House as well, together with Moro, Hey Pro, TLO, and I think Cytoplasm was there as well for a little while. So, definitely those guys. And Show, of course. Show was the one that I'm forgetting. One of the first Pro Houses ever yes. in the foreigner scene over there in Sweden. Guys, we're going to take a very short break, and then it'll be game number two Minigun versus Bishu. Is Bishu, the unlikely Swede, going to be in our final? That would be is something, man. Be in our fourth season? We will find out after this commercial break, so stay tuned.